guide in this video, we're going to look at the ATIT's math mixed review part two for the T6. These questions are going to be similar to problems five through seven found in the mathematics section quiz in the ATIT study manual. So maybe you've already worked through the mathematics section quiz and you want some similar questions. Well, here we go. Here's number five and then number six and number seven. So some these are a little bit similar, but then there's some different pieces about it. So number five, it says, show the steps needed to solve the following equation. Sometimes on the T's test, if you have to solve an equation, it's not going to ask you for the answer. It's going to kind of give you a couple of choices, multiple choice answers, and you want to list the proper steps. Now, there's definitely more than one way to do this, but I'm going to go over the most common way for solving equations here. We got our equals right here in the middle. So we have 7x plus 5x minus 6 is equal to 8x plus 10. And I'm drawing this line down through the middle because you want to focus on each side individually. The first step I recommend doing is cleaning up each side the best that you can. For example, over here, we can combine like terms with the 7x plus the 5x. So that gives us 12x when we combine like terms. Bring down your minus 6 from right up here. We have equals 8x plus 10. There is nothing else that we can combine on the left-hand side. We cannot take 12 minus 6 because they're not like terms. We cannot take 8x plus 10 because those are not like terms either. From here, the next, uh, there, there's more than one way to do this again, but the, what I typically do is I like to get my x on one side or my variable term on one side. So we had the 8x and we had this 12x. I want to get those on the same side. Now there's more than one way to do this, but this is the better approach, I guess, if you want to call one better. I like to move the smaller to the bigger. So I'm taking away that 8x over here. Notice 8x minus 8x, that's going to cancel out. That gives you zero right there. As long as you do this on both sides of the equation, totally fine. So what we're doing here is we're eliminating, we're canceling out something over here and we're moving it over here to this side of the equation. Now notice where I wrote it, I wrote it beneath the 12x because we can combine those to get 4x, 12 minus 8 is 4, then bring down your minus 6 equals 10. So that's another proper step right there. Now from here we want to move the 6 over and then the 4. Be careful with the order that you do these as well. We're trying to get the x by itself, we're subtracting 6 right here, so we have 4x minus 6 equals 10. This really means 4 times something minus 6 gives us 10. Well, some of you may already know the answer is 4 because 4 times 4 is going to give us 16 and 16 minus 6 gives us 10. Well, we need to show those steps. So the way to do that is we're going to add 6 to both sides. And again, I'm moving this 6 here over to the right-hand side. Negative 6 plus 6, they cancel out. I'm doing the inverse operation right here. Bringing down what we have left, 4x over here, that's all we have left is equal to 10 plus 6 is 16. And now our equation is 4 times something gives us 16. Well, 4 times 4 gives us 16. But the correct way to show this is to divide because we're multiplying 4 and x together. So we're going to divide by 4. And 4 divided by 4 cancels out. That's only because 4 divided by 4 is 1. And therefore, we have an x left over right here. So x equals 4. That's the proper steps to solve that equation. Now, again, if you're looking in the ATIT study manual, you will see what I'm talking about on question number five, how the answers are given to you. They're, they're asking you to show the steps that are needed to solve that equation. So there we go, our answers for, but all these steps in here are important for uh, being able to successfully answer a question on the ATIT's math test. Now, number six, Jose is trying to calibrate his new fitness watch. The app that comes with the watch asks for the user to input their average stride. A stride is just how many, how far, uh, when, you when you take a step, about how far apart are the center of your feet, the center of your right foot and the center of your left foot. How far apart is that? Jose measures this to be approximately two and a half feet. So notice the decimal there, 2.5 feet. Using 2.5 feet as his stride, how many feet will Jose walk if he takes 6,000 steps in a day? Since we can use the calculator on the ATIT's math test, we can just take, okay, this is how much is going to be in one step. Two and a half feet is going to be one step since he's taking 6,000 steps. We can just multiply 6,000. Whoops. And we multiply that by two and a half. So therefore, we get 15,000 feet. And again, there, all I did was I took the 6,000 steps 
and he's walking two and a half feet for each step, and that gives us 15,000 feet. So nothing crazy there, um, as long as you understand to multiply there. Now question B says, how many miles is this? Now, do you have to know how many feet are in a mile? I would recommend it. I'm not saying you have to know it, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you anyway, there's 5,280 feet in one mile. So this is how many feet we have in a mile. Well, he's walking quite a few feet in a day. 6,000 steps, two and a half feet per step, that's 15,000 feet. Now, the, the quick way to do this is you divide. We can take the 15,000 and divide by 5,280 to get our answer. I'm gonna go ahead and show you that, but then I'll show you another approach using a proportion. So we already had the 15,000 right here. Let's divide that by 5,280. And again, the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm taking the total number of feet that he walks in a day, I'm dividing it up into how many feet give me a mile, so this is going to give us roughly 2.8 miles. So I'm gonna go ahead and round that off. Um, that's approximately 15,000 feet is approximately 2.8 miles. And again, I'm just rounding that. Now, what's another way that we can do this to reiterate this idea? Well, what we can do is we can use a proportion. I'm going to take this conversion factor right here, 5,280 feet, that's equal to one mile. So the way I have this set up is I have feet over here, I have miles over here. Well, we know how many feet Jose is gonna walk in a day if he takes 6,000 steps at two and a half feet per step. That's gonna be 15,000 feet. I'm gonna put that over here on this side because notice I have my feet over here, but we don't know how many miles he's walking if we're trying to solve it this way. We're gonna get the exact same answer as long as you remember how to solve a proportion. Remember at any point in time, please refer back to my, my, uh, my website, idomath.weebly.com. I've mentioned that in several videos and I go over proportions in more detail with you. But what we can do to solve a proportion here is we can cross multiply. So I'm gonna multiply these and I'm going to multiply these. And some of you even know a bigger shortcut where you just cross multiply and divide. But let's take it step by step here. We take the 15,000 times one, we get 15,000. You didn't have to multiply that one first if you didn't want to, but I got those. And now when we multiply the other way, 5,280 times X is gonna be 5,280 X. Just like in the problem before, when we are trying to get a variable by itself, if we have a number getting multiplied by this variable, we want to divide by it to get it by itself. So therefore, I'm gonna divide by that 5,280. And again, the reason why I'm doing that is because that's going to give us that X by itself. 5280 over 5280, that cancels out. That gives us a one, but we still have the X. So we have one X left over there. And notice, that's exactly what I typed into the calculator a moment ago. Back here when I did this little shortcut here, I took 15,000 and I divided it by 5280. Double check that in your calculator, but you'll get somewhere right around 2.8 miles. So that's two ways of doing it. Uh, some of you may be able to sit there and you know roll right on through it. I'm gonna put a little approximation symbol. Some of you may be able to realize, hey, all we did here was multiply, and then all we did here is divide. But I wanna give you those other techniques, proportions here, to give you an alternative way, just in case you're a little bit confused about when to multiply and when to divide. Number seven, the last one for this part of the tutorial is Javon and Yvette, they're taking a road trip. The total distance of the trip will be 986 miles. They have already traveled 190 miles in the first three hours of their trip. They plan to stop at the halfway point of the trip to rest at a hotel. How many more miles do they have left? And I'm gonna reword this until they get to the halfway point or until they get to the hotel. And the reason why I wanna say that is because that question was a little bit misleading there. Um, you know, you might say, well, how many miles do they have left until they get to the end of their road trip or till they get to the halfway point? So I added this little bit of extra literature right here to get that point across. Well, 986 miles is the total distance of the trip. They've already traveled 190 miles. And in all honesty, the question did not ask me how much more time. It didn't, the question does not refer to anything to time. It just says how many more miles. So in all honesty, I don't really care about the three hours, not for this problem. We could tie that into it, but I'm not gonna do that here. So we're talking about a halfway point. Well, what we could do is we can take that 986 and we can figure out what the halfway point is, is just by dividing by two. 
So let's go to our calculator, save a little bit of time. Let's do 996. And let's divide it by two. So 493 miles is going to be the halfway point. So 493 miles. This right here is the halfway point. Well, they've already gone 190. So how much further do they have left? Well, if it's 493 miles to the halfway point, they've already tackled 190 miles of it. All we have to do with this number right here is subtract it from 493 to figure out how many miles we have left. So doing that quickly, we get a three, we get a zero, and we get a three. So they have 303 miles left until they reach the halfway point. And there you have it. That's three more examples. Again, we're going to follow up with a part three to this sometime in the near future, uh, you know, going through similar questions. But then, you know, I'm kind of mixing it up a little bit too. But these questions, again, are similar to the mathematics section in the ATIT study manual, that section quiz that you have there. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.